So, welcome to this class again we had finished electric vehicle section of the course. Today I am going to start a slightly smaller, but very important section which talks about energy scenario in India and also talks about renewable energy. So, should have been titled introducing to energy scenario in India and renewable energy. Solar P photovoltaic is one of the renewable energy, but we are going to talk more than that. So, let me start by giving you an overview of what is the energy scenario in India. Let us look at this, this is an important slide. All of us now must be reading enough about the threat of global warming. Hmm? If we continue like this in 15, 20, 25, 30 years, our earth's temperature is going to go up like anything. It is going to melt most of the ice, most many of the areas will get flooded, climate will have a devastative impact, which is already we are seeing that. And it is no longer a theory, I think there is enough proof now that this is happening at a very rapid rate. Unless we reverse it, the earth is in trouble. Now, some of us are older people and maybe earth will last and we will last, but many of you are younger, at least 50, 60 years to go forward, the earth will be in big, big trouble unless we take action today. The primary reason for this global warming is the rate at which we are burning fossil fuel. There are other reasons also, but fossil fuels is the primary. Coal, diesel, petrol, oil, LPG, natural gas, all of them are contributing to the global warming. And this is the actual contribution by country wise. So, if you see this is a slightly older data, but uh, Australia and United States are really leading the most if you want to call it polluter, this is the carbon dioxide emissions uh, and then South Africa, China, United Kingdom, though this is the world average hmm, um, and Brazil, this is the total. Uh, um, and this is the Brazil, India is very small. If you look in terms of per capita carbon dioxide emissions. So, while we are talking about reversing this, one will say well the onus does not lie on India. It is 103rd in per capita electricity consumption, 140th actually this is not right, this I should change it. This is also 103rd. Please remind me to change it or maybe I will change or I there is no point in changing here. I need to change it in the master slides. So, it is 104th or 103rd also in terms of per capita carbon dioxide emissions. Hmm? So, one will sort of say well we are contributing so little per capita, why should we have to do anything? We are anyway a country which consumes little, which uh, has a large population, not very well off, their incomes need to go up, their consumption of energy need to go up. So, we do not need to worry about this, our per capita is here, let us see the others. We are even so much behind below the world average, why should we be concerned about it? Same thing is about per capita electricity consumption. If you see India is well here. Hmm? less than about a thousand kilowatt hour per year. Whereas, countries like United States are consuming 13,000 kilowatt hour per year. Why should India be concerned? In the, and this is the position that the many times the governments have also taken that the onus of global reversing global warming is not ours. India is in development stage and needs to grow and consume more. You know, Sometime we deceive ourselves, because we only look at the way we want to look at it. Let me give you another data. 
the total greenhouse emissions emitted by different countries. Of course, you see China is the leader consuming about emitting about 28 percent, United States is the next 15 percent and India is number 3, 7 percent. So, I agree that we agree that we are not emitting as much as China, China and United States need to do more, but the third is India and it is also the third largest in terms of energy consumption. Why? Because our population is large. You have to multiply per capita by the population. Soon as you do, we are a large polluter. Our contribution to this global warming is very significant. Even if the rest of the world backs out, somehow does something and India does not do something, we will be in trouble. And worse is, India has a very rapidly growing GDP. It has averaged about 6.75 percent over last 30 years, slowed down a bit over last 4 or 5 years, but hopefully it will pick up. In fact, the government says we will grow at 10 percent. Now, what does the increasing GDP mean? That we like to consume more energy. Hmm? Let us just give you an example. From 1990, since our we are growing at 7 percent per capita, per 6.75 percent per year, our GHG emission has increased by 335 percent. And we are going to therefore, go faster than that. In next two decades, we can increase by another three times. Once we are another three times, we are comparable to the worst. Let us take for example, air conditioning. Today, only 8 percent of Indian homes have air conditioning. But India is a warm country and as people start getting little more incomes, of course, they first buy washing machines, some kitchen appliances and washing machine. Hmm? Many homes today as soon as they get a little money, some mixer and then washing machine is a next very important thing, which helps you wash your clothes, otherwise it is a very, very laborious job. The third item I will sort of say will be air conditioner. Somebody will say, oh, in this fan is not good enough, it is so hot and at least let us get a small air conditioner. Air cooler, many of them already have. Air cooler is fortunately not that high energy consumption, but people are increasingly, lower middle class has already started using air coolers and wanting to move to air conditioners. It is expected that this air conditioning market is going to go to 50 percent by 2050. Going to, so suddenly you will see huge increase. Our numbers is going to very rapidly increase. If you track year by year, we are increasing very rapidly and we need to do something. If we do not do something, world is in trouble. So, I we totally agree that China and United States has to do more, many other countries have to do lot more, their per capita consumption is also very large, but India's overall consumption is very large and our population is not going to go down rapidly, it is only going to increase for some time, not for very long, but and we need to worry about this. Next question is, where does our greenhouse emission come from? And if you look at it, primarily it is a usage of coal. And what do we use coal primarily for? Number one, we use coal for generating electricity. Number two, coal is used in industry quite a bit in India. Iron industry, particularly cement industry, it is used. So, industry of course have switched over to electricity, started using electricity quite a bit. Now we have electricity surplus in the country, so people have started using electricity but it still consumes a lot of coal and gas and both of them are highly, highly polluting. In fact, we will show you the number, I mean the um, uh, consumption by the industry is very, very high. Um, we will show you numbers later on and if the industry, so it is not just electricity, but even the coal and gas consumption by in, uh, uh, industry. Primarily, what does it do? It is for high temperature heating, high temperature reaction. 
700, 800, 1000, 1200. That is where coal and gas is used. Electricity can be used for that heating except it does not come in a very concentrated form the way we it is required and coal and gas is used. Then cooking, of course, there is some amount of coal and biomass which is all polluting, but a significant percent is LPG. And while LPG may be better than coal and biomass, but it is still bad, it contributes to fossil fuel. Then all our transport, almost everything petrol and diesel, of course, there is a electric uh, trains, but rest of it is all and there they are diesel trains also and rest of it is pet all our cars, two wheelers, three wheelers, buses, trucks are petrol and diesel. That consumption is going on like anything. The surface transport, of course, also water transport, but water transport is small in India. So, surface transport, you know, it's not just cars and two wheelers and three wheelers, a lot of truck transport. Truck transport has gone up like this over the last 30 years. Earlier, most of our transport used to be trains. Now, most of them, but trains requ would require your loading, unloading. Today, switched over to trucks. And th those of you who have ever driven in highway, you would have seen lines of trucks. Hmm? So, and they are all petrol diesel. So, we are contributing very heavily to the greenhouse gas emission. This are the same kind of numbers, but look at what is happening from this is only 20 years, not even from 1990. Our population is going up, yes. Hmm. Population by the way is flattening. We do not expect it to go very much up now. It is already starting to flatten. GDP has been very rapidly going up, that is uh, which is good, huh? has been going up. It is already now 3 trillion dollars and it is going up. Hmm? Um, energy demand, see the energy demand. Energy demand is going up faster than GDP. Of course, we are adding a small amount of renewables, but and traditional biomass, you see um, some small nuclear, then oil, gas, coal. Rising population and income since 2000 have underpinned a doubling of energy use in India. See, from 420, 430 million tons of energy, we are now closer to 920, 930. Hmm. Though our per capita energy consumption is very low, that point I want to make it, but that cannot be our defense. GDP goes us energy usage goes up and GDP will go up further. We have to reduce energy consumption. Well, I would say we have to necessarily reduce energy consumption. We have to shift the energy usage to renewables and this is the key thing about this chapter. Now, some time back, five, 7, 8 years back when I started working on renewable energy, I was used to work in telecommunications and from there I started working on energy and electric vehicles. And that time people would sort of say yes, yes, but renewables are very, very costly and India cannot afford it. No longer true, just I will show you some number. The solar electricity from solar farms, we get electricity into the grid. How much does it cost? The generation cost is as low as 2 rupees per kilowatt hour, put into rupee 2 to 50. Your rooftop solar may cost you slightly higher, but if you do large plant of the gigawatt st uh, level, it is 2 rupee to 2 rupee 50 paise per kilowatt hour. What about wind? We have plenty of wind. This is also 2 rupee 50 paise per kilowatt hour. All the time bidding goes on, new companies come up and they bid. They say 25 years I will supply electricity. 25 years they are ready to supply at 2 rupees, between 2 rupees to 250 without increase in prices. Just imagine, whereas everything else will go up. What about coal based electricity, which is the cheapest form of electricity, which is the dominant, our primary use. If you look at the numbers, if you look at this, we are primarily coal based. 
So, um, coal based electricity is also in fact it is between 2 rupees 50 to 4 rupees for the newer plant it is closer to 4 rupees. There are older plants highly polluting if I we have to put emission control equipment it will go to um, um, 4 rupees and oil and gas plant I have actually put these numbers at I had put it about 7 8 months back and I think you probably know what has happened in last 7 to 8 months. So, it was put as 18 rupees and 14 rupees is oil and gas today it will be more like 22 rupees and 16 17 rupees per kilowatt hour per unit. Unit is per kilowatt hour a unit of electricity we are charged per unit it is that. So, oil and gas is very expensive it is still petrol diesel diesel is 24 rupees per kilowatt hour and we whatever our power goes up we turn on our diesel generators. Hmm. Solar and wind is now the cheapest in India. So, the question is why are we continue to use coal, oil, gas? Why can't we make all our electricity from solar and wind? The question is do we have enough capacity? Can we meet all our demand today and tomorrow? The answer is yes. There is a plenty of solar and wind in India in the whole of India as well as if I look at in the ocean nearby ocean also it can generate. Hmm. In fact, I have done a calculation that a small percent very small area in Rajasthan desert. I think I, if my memory is may be wrong, but I think 4 percent of Rajasthan desert where pretty much nobody stays. If you put solar that can meet the whole demand of the country. Of course, you have to transport it, but there are transmission lines. So, India has capacity, capacity is not the issue. We can keep on increasing the capacity. Where is the problem? The problem comes. So, and this is the main thing that we will be dealing with that solar and wind is not available 24 by 7. When is, when is solar available? Whenever Suras Devata is out, up, up. If it is bright, we get lot of electricity, not that bright, we get less. Evenings, nights, we do not get. If it is highly cloudy, we do not get or get very little. Wind, it may be there, may not be there. So, it is not 24 by 7. I cannot turn on turn off solar and wind energy. Hmm? This is nature. Whereas, coal plant, gas plant, petrol plant, diesel generator I can turn on turn off. So, we have a control. Hmm? So, be, what happens if I cannot turn off turn on increase decrease what do I do with the energy generated? I have to at every instant look at what is the demand and generate only that much, but that I cannot do for solar and wind whatever is generated is generated. 